Stand by, guys. All right, here in the studio live. Is it 12 already? And it's Friday already? Crazy. So this is the final day, the fifth and final day, the 2022 Owen TV food drive for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. I'm Ian Locke, executive director here at Owen TV. And uh, yes, this is our fifth and final day of the food drive. Programming today, if you tuned in earlier, uh, is history. So we've been running old videos from old newscasts from the 90s, mid 90s, uh, other programs, history related, um, all day today. And so today we will have special programming too in the studio with uh, Jimmy and Joe doing their thing today, uh, talking about Lake Orion history, pictures and video and a whole bunch of fun stuff. And we'll get to them in just a moment. But uh, we do have housekeeping. If you've been following us all week or if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, we are doing a food drive and fun drive simultaneously here at the Own TV studios for 2022 due to the pandemic. And fish, we know about fish. They serve our community and do so many wonderful things for those in need. And we're just here to help them restock those shelves at the pantry, which uh, we just talked to Michelle, the, the president this morning. And she said, a lot of the food is really flying off the shelves. There's a lot of people in need in Orion, Oxford, Addison, and Oakland Township. So here we are, uh, we've upped our collection goal total to $6,500 just because your donations have been through the roof. And we currently sit at $6,100 in cash donations donated by our sponsors, by uh, just regular folk around Orion Township. I know uh, some staff donated today, I donated today, so we're really pushing towards that 6,500 goal. But the, the crazy thing is, I, I, th I think we're gonna blow by that today because the VFW did something amazing today uh, and we're gonna have a video of that uh, in just a moment. But what are we doing here? How can you donate? You can donate easily by going to our website at orionontv.org and you can click on the Food Drive logo and donate through GoFundMe. The Do GoFundMe account will be active through uh, 5 p.m. today, our business hours. And uh, so donate right now and donate often. Uh, you can also donate in person here at the studios at ONTV, 1349 Joslin Road. You can bring uh, your cash donations directly to us. As you know, when you donate online, there are some fees uh, removed from your donation just for processing and all that good stuff. So if you want a 100% of your donation to get in the hands of fish and those in need, drop off your monetary donations right at the studio, again, at the Orient Center, 1349 Joslin Road. You can also bring your food donations in. We are taking non-perishable food items uh, like we've done all week, and we'll be taking those all the way through 5 p.m. today as well. And uh, actually, if you, if you can't make today, we are not really do, don't, are delivering the food donations until about Tuesday next week to fish, right? We just got that information in. So we've had a couple uh, uh, volunteers or people who donate uh, every year to fish come in and say, oh, I missed it. Said, you didn't miss it. You can come into Owen TV and you can still donate your food items right to our offices on Monday and Tuesday as we are filling our van, the Owen TV van. We're trying to fill it up with uh, food donations. And so far we're doing very well with the, uh, really uh, a lot better than we anticipated. So we thank you for all those food donations. People are driving up and just dropping their donations off at our big production truck, which is out in the Orion Center parking lot. You cannot miss it. It's the big white van with our logo all over it. The door is open with the big cones out there to, to say, hey, here we are. Donate uh, today, drop off those uh, donations if you don't wanna hop in the building. Okay, one thing we need to also do is if you are in a food emergency, don't hesitate. Call Fish right now, 248-628-3933. They are helping anyone and everyone who gives them a call. Uh, yes, they have certain communities that they serve, but we just talked to Michelle, the president today, and she mentioned that uh, it's not unheard of to say, if you are in dire need of some assistance uh, right now, Fish is there for you. Uh, they streamlined their uh, process to uh, be a client at Fish, so it is uh, much easier to get uh, the needed resources if you need them immediately. Again, call 248-628-3933 if you are in a food emergency, or head on over to their website at oxfordorionfish.org for more information. Uh, some needed items to be donated if you're looking to donate some of those physical items. Uh, the season changes, and so do their needs. So we're looking at 
uh, canned pineapple, canned mandarin oranges, or other canned fruits, uh, chilies, uh, meat stews, all those hearty uh, meals that you can uh, prepare uh, during these cold winter months. Uh, hamburger helper is also a big one. So you can jazz up your, your hamburger, or if you're getting some turkey burger, you can jazz it up with help, hamburger helper. That is always a needed item. And also ketchup and mustard and different condiment items, but also, uh, we have, you can donate uh, toiletry items, toothpaste, uh, toothbrushes, shampoos, soaps, sponges and scrubbing sponges. Uh, they take everything, anything to help a, uh, a household uh, do their business, get some food, fill their bellies. Okay, those are the needed items. Before we get on to uh, some of the content today, again, this is History Day on the fifth day of the food drive. We're going to say thank you to our sponsors. Without our sponsors' help, we would never come close to reaching our collection goal. We had an initial collection goal of $5,000. We blew through that on Monday uh, right away. And uh, so we upped it to $6,500 on the advice of our good friend Matt Pfeiffer from Northern Wholesale Florin, who we're going to be chatting with momentarily. So before we get into that uh, little interview and uh, get uh, some of his insights on what's happening here in the food drive, uh, let's uh, take a look at our uh, video today for our sponsors for Friday the 11th of February already. Wow. Take a look. at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2022 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Canterbury Village, located at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. First time sponsor to the Food Drive, donated $1,000. You can find more information about Canterbury Village by visiting their website, canterburyvillage.com. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Meyer, who donated $900. M3 Investments contributed $500. Donnie Steele for State Representative is a one-day sponsor. Kroger with their $200 donation to fish. Culver's. Culver's is a return partner to the food drive and are keeping our crew fed. Home Depot, who gave $100 and Old World Canterbury Village with an amazing $1,000 donation to fish. Sponsors are what make our $5,000 goal achievable. We can't thank them enough for their continued support. Now we'd like to take some time to show you videos featuring two of our sponsors, Home Depot and Culver's. Let's take a look. has been so important for us at Home Depot locally here at the Lake Orion store over the years really because we have a value wheel and two values to touch on that the food drive fits right into is giving back and building strong relationships and this is what we can do it's a very small part to give back to our community build those relationships and take care of those far less fortunate right here in our own backyard we love the food drive and it's something that our associates can do they quickly feel that feel good that they're giving back to the community and making a difference right here locally. The past projects, there's a huge list. The Veterans Memorial is one that's near and dear to our hearts. We did that uh, platform there. And then a few years after that, we did their Victory Garden, which flourishes every year and that we plant, we take care of. And those vegetables stay right here locally and those feed veterans locally. We've done the Orient Art Center, we've done the American Legion in downtown. Up in Oxford, we've done that Legion. We did the gazebo a few years ago in Children's Park. The list I could even go bigger on that, but our upcoming one that we're really excited about that we can't wait to work with the township is at Friendship Park. They have a local community garden there. We are going to be expanding it and we are going to be building raised beds to help the senior citizens here locally. All of those beds currently are low to the ground. So we're gonna get some raised beds there for people that have artificial hips or knees that can't bend down, but wanna get out and garden. So we're working with the township and the Orion Center, and it's gonna be a big project here in the spring that we're gonna build them here locally in our parking lot. They're gonna be transported there. So it's, it's gonna be a big deal and a, a really good thing for that community garden to expand. 
So that, that was one ways. We've been doing bucket kits, so building in our home at buckets, whether it's cleaning supplies or uh, PPE for people. So there's all different things locally that we've been doing to support, but it's definitely changed. It's a different vision. And we're really hopeful that this year we're able to at least do some outdoor projects to make a big impact out there in the community. Are you looking for projects in the future? Can someone approach you with ideas for projects and how would they go about doing that? We are always looking for projects. If locally, if they're looking for something or even if they're out of the area, but they know someone and how to make that contact, they can always contact me right here at the store locally at the Lake Orion store and they can uh, come in, talk to me. We can field it out, what they're looking for. Maybe it is something we can do, maybe it's something we can't do, just based on volunteer skills. But maybe it's something that we can direct you to a different organization that we have contacts with as well. But we're always looking for things, again, to give back, build those strong relationships, and our associates love to volunteer. And it's 100% a volunteer base. So they take an extra day off, they either take their personal time and they give of themselves to make a difference right here in our community. Joe Zimmer opened Culver's in 2008. For those traveling north on M24, the restaurant is the first business visitors encounter as they enter into Orion Township. Culver's has become so ingrained within the community, it's difficult to imagine a time when it didn't exist. On any given day, a diner might encounter a car cruise, bingo, or kids' night. And you can be sure to find Joe Zimmer serving up his famous butter burgers and frozen custard at community events throughout the year. We're the number one store in our region, thanks, thank goodness, to all the community. And I've always been a believer of uh, if they're good to you, you be good to them. And so. Uh, during that seven years, or almost seven, we've been able to give back, I think, around about $130,000. And uh, we do that through fundraisers and various donations and, and what have you. And I've been in the business for over 50 years, and uh, I still learn things every day. But what I really like about it is the people that I work with and the opportunity that I have to meet new guests. And Culver's is an awesome brand. In fact, we were voted the, the number two restaurant. I, would, I don't need to tell you what the number one was, but we go back and forth far as recognition and the value and the, the, the quality of the, the food, the cleanliness of the restaurant. And, the, and what really makes us stand out, I think, uh, Joe, is, uh, uh, is the hospitality that we offer. In fact, we were just voted uh, by you people. Uh, the number one hospitality in the Orient Township. So, a little history about Culver's. In 2013, Joe Zimmer was named Business Person of the Year by the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce, recognizing his efforts in the community. He still gets emotional when asked about that honor. You know, that was, um, God, it almost brings tears to my eyes to, to hear that again, but it was a great honor. And uh, I, I've been a believer in, uh, I've lived in the community for over 30 years, and I just love this community. And uh, I love the, the, the Culver's brand. I've had probably over a, half, over a dozen restaurants, and this is the best restaurant that I've had. And I plan on being here until they put me down, but it's so unfortunate, you know, and it, it's also sometimes hard to believe that right here in Orion Township, which is a great community, and Oxford as well, that, that there's people that that don't eat. And uh, I guess it's gratifying to be able to, to uh, you know, to help those people out that are less fortunate. And so many are blessed, but there's, there's quite a few that aren't. And so it's a good feeling. All right, we're back here in the lobby. Again, it's the fifth day of the food drive. We've been very active all week collecting monetary donations food donations take a peek look at this uh, home depot North, northern wholesale flooring the staff over there Gowling, buick gmc donate a bunch of this stuff can't thank these guys enough for all their donations and our corporate sponsors we had a record 16 sponsors and uh, we can never say thank you enough to those guys over and over again um, just amazing stuff. Canterbury Village, uh, especially a thousand dollar donation. Meyer, nine hundred dollar donation. You know how it goes. We've been saying it all week. Without them, we would not reach our goal. We started at a goal of five thousand dollars. 
We blew, blew through that number on Monday at 5100 and then we upped it to 65 We're now sitting at $6,100, trying to get to 65 So here we are in the lobby. Our good man, uh, man uh, Matt Pfeiffer from Northern Wholesale Flooring oh. is back. Our closer is back. Yeah, Last wow. year he came in here, what was it, about 10.45 in the morning? Sure. Before he we went on air, it was a snowstorm, it was a blizzard. Schools were closed, but he goes, hey, how can I help you? And what was it, 40, I did, I 40 minutes? I had to barefoot <laughs> in the snow uphill to get here. Yes. But we got here, and we got it done. Yes, and 40 minutes into, I think, your free-for-all extravaganza on Facebook, rolling around the studios, we surpassed our collection goal. So that's so what we're going to do just today. Like that. We're going to surpass the goal. So we need you guys to jump in. I put the... I put Put the link to <laughs> ontv.org. You can go there and you can donate right, you right on uh, Facebook. You guys can share this out. <laughs> share it to your friends. So we're, we're on a. I think we're going to go into another um, another. Uh, what is it? A. Uh, uh, what you're the you're the uh, sci-fi guy, Joe. What are we going into? Another dimension. Another dimension. <laughs> yes. Okay. So pull. So. Okay. Because I think I think we went I think we went ludicrous today. So so. Chris Barnett, Tundra Supervisor, is here. Yes. Back from DC, uh, world traveler, and he, he's streaming live on I'm his alive. Facebook I'm alive. feed. I'm alive. So we, we're on two Facebook streams, three, because we're, we're on ONTVs and we're on all the cable channels. We're on Roku, we're on you name it, we're on it. So You can find us. You if can you find us. find us, but we need you to the find us. The question is will you donate? Oh, how many people yeah. are watching yours, Matt? Only, oh, is this a couple? Oh. Whoa, oh. okay. Oh. See, that's what oh. we need to know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's what? killing me. Oh, yeah. No, the, you know, wait, I'm winning. I have, <laughs> I have 7,000. Yeah, 7,000. I have 9,000. <laughs> and we don't have to verify. He wins. <laughs> well, but there called, might be some zeros called, added into uh, those My numbers. brother calls that mayor math. You <laughs> know, <laughs> we always round up by yeah. a couple three zeros, yeah. right? So, Chris, te you know, Matt, we're going to get with Matt just before he goes crazy for us to start uh, trying to push us crazy. over the edge. Well, wait, before you go to Chris. Okay. If you're watching this, I want you to share it now, you share it to sure your I'm friends, on. share it to your page, <laughs> because what we want to do is we want to try and finish strong. <laughs> Remember that every dollar raised means three pounds of food for the Oxford Orient community. So if you have food needs, you reach out to Oxford Orient Fish and you're going to get help. But we're here to raise uh, a record amount. This will yes, be a record, absolutely, yeah. a record. And um, you guys can do this. And it's a great thing. And I really especially want to challenge all of you businesses. If you're a business benefiting from this great community of Orient, Oxford, and surrounding areas, then by golly, it's your responsibility, it's your duty to give back. You write a check for 100 bucks, that's 300 pounds of food, you're going to feed a bunch of people, and you're going to feel good about it, and your staff's going to feel good about it, so today's Absolutely. the day, you jump on and donate now. You do this, please. Yes, All right, now and, you I mean, we're over. almost there. I mean, we were so close. So close. And, uh, we don't have a goal. We're, the, goal's <laughs> the goal is 10,000. 10, yeah, 10, the goal is whatever, 10, whatever, bear, right? Yeah. So uh, great stuff. So Matt's uh, book, uh -huh. he's bookending us today. So uh, he started with Monday. He's closing on Friday. Chris, uh, you're a busy guy, uh, to say the least. DC, just got back from DC and uh, made time for us to yes. come out to the food drive. First always all, a supporter of this food drive. Always, will always make time for the food drive. The Orion Oxford Fish, as I call it. I know they might have a different name. <laughs> We've been calling it both every week, all uh, week long. And yeah. ONTV <laughs> has just been phenomenal. This is, what year, how many years have you this done this? This is 12. Year 12. Um, don't get jealous, Matt, of my it's feet. A oh, it's <laughs> a tie. Right. Um, so, so, I mean, this is what sets our community apart. Yesterday, we were in the other room for the annual chamber uh, yep. breakfast. And we hear over and over and over that this community steps up and gives. I mean, um, I was I just met with Jack Curtis this morning, Oxford supervisor. I know he was there. Yeah, he was here on Monday. Week. Yeah. Um, we have become best friends with Oxford. We have be we're, we're like when people need help in Metro Detroit. Frankly, yeah. They look to us. They look to Matt Pfeiffer, uh, who is just constantly giving his time and talents to our community, and it's what makes our community yeah. different, unique, and and really special. So. Of course I'm here. Of course I'm supporting. It's been a crazy like whirlwind, actually month for me. Um, yeah. Travel all over, but but um, my heart and home is obviously here, and yep. my job. Yep. Uh, and so thank you for what you guys do. And uh, I mean, the and township has always been with us yes. uh, from day one. We you know going live from there, having the electeds working with us, yeah. to the staff collecting on our behalf. You guys are always there. Uh, for fish and the other organizations, the other nonprofits in town, and the businesses. I mean, we all yeah. work together to get that message out I and mean, support I think each just other. Even on a, like just talking about you guys, this the Orient Neighborhood Television team. Um, I was in a meeting yesterday, and they're asking kind of you know, this is even a unique model 
um, to have our own strong cable uh, provider network, you know, um, all you guys do everything in the community. Yeah. And the fact that you take this building this week to give back to the community and use your whole staff running all around town is remarkable. <laughs> and we can't thank you guys enough. Yeah. So if you are watching, the, uh, let's see. Uh, Where is he at? 11,000. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> well, no number, evidence. Yeah, That's not fair. That number too close. Yeah. <laughs> but there's more people that That's will watch so later. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> and you can give. Please give. So tell people how they can give because I know we haven't covered that yet in this video. We haven't, uh, but uh, it's ingrained in my brain. Good. Our fifth day at Live on the Air from 12 to noon. Uh, you can give by heading to our website at orionontv.org. We have a GoFundMe account. It's active until 5 p.m. tonight. Uh, you can also do donate in person if you don't want to donate online and incur those fees that usually happen. You can come in and uh, cash donations are taken in hand by the staff or you can donate the physical uh, donations. We, our goal is to fill our production van which is parked out there in the Orient Center parking lot. And uh, we have to give kudos to the Lake Orion High School students. They really came through collecting and Roger Smith, uh, the mm -hmm. director at uh, Dragon Broadcasting. Uh, they almost single-handedly filled our van. Home Depot came in through through huge, and do. all their their foundation is fantastic. Gowling Buick GMC donations, and of course Northern Wholesale Flooring and their staff and their donations. So, Bill Cocaine is to drop a case after case of, drill case drill of drill. corn. I the do guy. like corn. I, I might take this one with me, but <laughs> but I, 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 I so, think yeah. I think one of the things I, I want to just talk about just for a minute is. Um, People might not always understand that there is a great need yeah. in this community uh, for people to have food. And um, we, many of us, many of you probably watching, uh, take that for granted. And um, it became really clear to me. Frankly, I did too. Oh, you're blocking my yeah. feet. Oh, <laughs> we we, we saw an unflattering. They jumped up in viewers. The so line. When Joe's behind was on your camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's funny, but no. But what but I'm saying right, is, yeah. is, is when it became clear to me. So I've had the privilege of of having this this fun yet wild job for the last ten years, believe it or not. And during the pandemic, um, we started calling our seniors. And uh, we, by the way, as an aside, we won uh, a state award for that. Yeah. We were recognized at the state level, and we got national, national recognition. Yeah. Uh, for our program reaching out to our seniors and we found out it wasn't just our seniors but many people in our community um, during the pandemic yeah. had this great need for food and often we take that for granted yeah. and then the pandemic we're not out of the pandemic but we are still um, learning that many people even before that had these needs and they were looking for for assistance and so what our community has done has been completely remarkable. Our partnership with Forgotten Harvest, we are their northern hub. Yeah. Um, every it's Monday, I know Matt's yeah. there. Um, we have an amazing team of people. The team at Woodside, Jim Dalkey. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, John, John, sorry, John. Um, <laughs> John and Jim, they're brothers, and we love them both. But anyway, um, people have these needs. And the fact that they know where to go and they look to, you know, pillars in the community, yeah. Um, which is, you know, our, our community television, our township staff um, is remarkable. So yeah. kind of the message that we have and we've been saying from the beginning of this crazy two years is that no one's going to be left behind. Yeah. There's no one that will be forgotten. We got your back. I mean, there have been so many doorstep deliveries. <laughs> um, just and it's not and it goes beyond food. Yeah. This 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 week's focus is food. And you know, really trying to well, look. We out. helped somebody repair a well. I mean, I mean, uh, right? Yeah. Transport, transport. Was yesterday, by the way. Right. But anyway, that's a, that's a different story. No, it is, but it, it, it goes to the the mindset of those who are, you know, working in the township, and it is a philosophy that it seems like the whole community has. Right. And it's like give back, give back, give back. It's service, right? So. And it and feels good, and, and this is this is that's the message, and it's amazing to see that we're engaging with our students, the school district. Yeah. People, you feel good when you give. <laughs> That's a fact. It's proven. Google it. Um, it does something for you yes. when you take something that you have access, which could be cash today, could be things in your pantry, and give it to others that are in need. Yeah. And what the goal of this is, is to jam full our Oxford Orient Fish Pantry. Yeah. See, I flipped it there yeah. that time. So that people can um, never go without. Oh, I'm getting phone calls there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and... The fact that you guys have done this is is and continue to do it 12 yeah. years is remarkable. So yeah, thank it, you. It really is our Super Bowl. We put all of it, all of it, the foresight of having a station like this. I mean, I've only been here, what, 13 years? Can you believe it's 13 years? No, I We've can't. almost been parallel crazy. since you came um, in office. And, 
you know, that sort of thing, that it's, it's grown to what it is. It is now an event calendar thing in town. And so, uh, but the support from our government agencies, the schools, uh, the business community has been outstanding and it always mm -hmm. has been. So, uh, I, I don't know what else to say. We're kind of, well, we're kind say, of, uh, how I mean, would you like listen, to wrap this one up? I, I, what I want to say is if you're watching, <laughs> am I beating him at, um, <laughs> please consider stopping by. We yes. are at 1335 Joslin. This is the Orient Center. Yep. Also the home of Orion Neighborhood Television. Yep. So if you want to drop off um, supplies or cash or check, please come here. Um, right next to Orion Oaks Elementary, right across from the dog park. Everybody knows where the dog park is. If you haven't yep. been here, you got to You can't the miss us. Um, so that, that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, you know, I'm just humbled and honored to be part of this. The, the, like, the, you know, Joe Johnson's behind the camera. <laughs> He's literally at every event. Uh, yes. Um, your team's amazing. I was going through on one of my flights in the last few weeks um, my Twitter feed just for fun to see what was on there. I don't know why I would do that, but <laughs> um, and I started going and getting back like years and and we had um, when we had this crazy storm. I think it was eight years ago, I believe. Um, and the way the community came together, and that was the start to me. That was the first big event in my kind of tenure here. Yeah. That we kind of put out the call and said, listen. We have people that have trees and stuff down everywhere yep. and we need to help and we have people with needs and the community totally rallied like people i'd never met before and those are some of my best friends today yeah. and every time there's a need oxford matt is i mean we cannot thank matt enough for um literally putting his business and his life on hold to adopt oxford um yeah absolutely and, and um that's just what we're about so mm -hmm. if you haven't been involved in this this might be your start <laughs> Swing by here today, yes. make a donation, but I promise you it's addictive. So I'm warning you, you're going to do it, and you're going to be addicted, and you're going to be part of this crazy Orion family um, that we wrap our arms around everybody, and Absolutely. I am just... Yeah. I'm just, just grateful to be such a part of it. It's the best part of my life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, it, it can be a serious topic, but also, you know, we want to make sure that, like you said, giving is contagious. And it does release those endorphins. It, may, it, it gives you some joy that you know you can help Let others, right? Let me tell you right? a little story. Uh, uh -oh. so, so you guys know that I um, you know, work the food there's truck There's never every a little Monday. story, right? Well, no. <laughs> It'll give, me, give me 24 minutes. Um, there's, uh, you know we do the food truck on Mondays. And we just got notice, uh, unfortunately, a few minutes ago as I was walking in, that it's going to be canceled on Monday because they're worried about weather. Because ah. it's going to be a very cold morning. Um, so unfortunately, sometimes we aren't there. We're still feeding about 250 yep. people. I'm sorry, 250 families. 250 families every week and at the height that was uh, closer to 600, 600 yeah. and so that's been uh, that shows you the food need but a little story um, uh, somebody reached out to uh, trustee uh, Julia Dalrymple the other day uh, it was an older couple that was having food challenges and uh, we gathered some food together and we ran and delivered the food and uh, I just got a text as I was coming in here from Julia that the uh, the um, we'll call it a uh, an elderly couple uh, here in our town that uh, sent a picture of the food on their table and how it was the first normal balanced meal that they've had together in years. Wow. Um, and uh, of course, you know, we're both crying and uh, we're talking about now what we're gonna do, we make sure they have a nice Valentine's meal, but the impact that is made um, when you, we, we work the food truck, and we are, we are still looking for volunteers, so you could join us in that, um, not this coming Monday. Um, the gratitude that we hear from the people that we're feeding is unbelievable. It is, um, it is there's nothing, when, when Chris talks about that we benefit from it, we benefit more than the people we're feeding. And so this is a gift to be able to do it. It's a responsibility to be able to do it, but it's one that you'll never regret. So to donate, if you jump on and click on that link right now and you donate 50 bucks, that's 150 pounds of food. Yeah, it's that simple. Um, 100 bucks, obviously, you can do the math, 300. So uh, please join us and let's show the community that uh, those in need in our community that we as a collective community will not let them um, have hunger. We will not let them be worried about taking care of their kids and their family and that we will give them the experience of just the, the pride of being able to have a nice meal on the table for their family and we can do that together and so um, you know these guys are all committed to it these guys have been busting their butt all week <laughs> uh, Chris is always involved in uh, uh, helping those in the community that need it and, and together we're a lot stronger together we're stronger I think that's yep, a, a common uh, theme we, we should use that sometime <laughs> yeah that'd be good but, um, uh, but so also, join us but also to, to conclude you know uh, just kind of wrap it up uh, we talked to Michelle this morning that was the hook by and the way. We, we talked to Michelle uh, the president of fish and she said more than ever last year there was you know the, the, the 
shelves were relatively stocked, but their funds were low. Uh, this year they said it is both. The shelves are getting bare and bare. So we need to get those uh, donations in, in the cash. The cash gives them flexibility to do what they need to do um, all year round. So um, with that, Chris, thank you so much. Yeah, Always absolutely. a pleasure. Thank you guys, and I'm glad you brought Matt. Julia because um, Julia is hey, Julia. Julia. Hey, Julia. She is obviously a township board member. Everybody yep. knows Miss D, uh, but she has um, been extremely um, the number of food deliveries that she's made and. Every ask for week. one yeah, of us to ask for it. I mean, and, and off, she'll probably get mad at us for saying that. But, yeah, but people just, have no idea. It's there's, yeah. There are just so many heroes among us. And um, this is your opportunity. If, yep. Even if you're already on our team, maybe give, <laughs> uh, give a little more. And if you're not, um, you will find your life when you give it away. That might be biblical, but it's there's a it's, there's, there's it's a fact. It's so, so um, thank you everyone. Thank yep. you, Orion, for always coming through. Um, Matt, are you still going to be streaming here? Are you yeah, still going to be will running? Yeah, because I've got a couple of questions. Where the the link again, uh, Jackie. Uh, thank yep. you, and you yep. always step up. Just head on to OrionOnTV.org, uh, and you can click the uh, click the food drive logo. It'll take you right to our GoFundMe account, and you can donate right now. We don't take AMX, Jackie. <laughs> or come on down and say hi. In your mattress hey. or come on All right, we know you as this at, devolves yeah, into know, a Facebook us. competition, we'll, we'll let these we'll, guys we'll go. go. We'll, uh, we'll, we're going to we'll roll some great footage we'll from the VFW. Uh, the guys from the VFW came in with a great donation. Uh, if we have that video ready, Joey, thumbs up. We good? Okay, let's roll that video of a great donation by the VFW guys today. These guys are going to go on to their regular programming. 500 bucks. We just got a commitment from Recovery Cleaners, Jackie. Board, welcome to the ON TV studio. Um, what do you think of everything that's going on? I'm overwhelmed right now. I cannot believe the amount of food that is here. I didn't expect this much. It, it's really because it was supposed to just be a financial. So the, the fact that we have this much food, it's quite overwhelming. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking that I need a couple more volunteers. Yes, <laughs> it's very impressive. It just, you know, with the economy and everything that's going on right now, it's just the, the generosity of this community is just truly overwhelming. What are uh, Fish's needs right now? Honestly, right now, anything that we can get. We, we will not say no to anything. The volume of food that is going out of the pantry right now is just astronomical with food prices right now. The clients, you know, the needs are really there between the food prices and the gas prices. That, you know, the, the volume truly, and we've upped our volume of food that we're allowing our clients to take just because we know they need it. So, and we're able to meet the needs because of the generosity of this community. We, you know, if, we, if it doesn't come in, it can't go out. Now, over the past couple of years, you were uh, relying heavily on the curbside service. Correct. Now you said things are kind of getting back to normal a little bit. Yes. Uh, and the thing that I'm kind of excited about is that you've kind of eased your your restrictions and, and you allow people who are in food emergency situations to approach and yes. talk about that. Yes, it used to be a more difficult process. It would maybe take a week or so. Now, really, as long as they live in the area, we just we just basically need their address, the, you know, the children that are in the home, and then we can get them in. It's not all the, you know, we don't need all the documentation that we did prior. Because really, even right now, we'll get phone calls that clients need to be, they're like, I only need food maybe once, you know, twice because of, you know, they've gotten COVID, they can't work for a couple of weeks. So there's a lot of different needs that we're seeing right now. And really, because of the generosity of the community and the volume of food that we're receiving, there's no reason for us not to just give it to anybody that's in need. So really, if you, know, if you call and you need food, and as long as you live in our area, we're going to give it to you. And if you, for some reason you're not in our area, we're definitely then going to, you know, we've even had a couple of times where I've had people that are actually outside of our boundaries yeah. that I'm like, it's fine, just come on and we'll take care of you now and we'll get you set up with the other pantry in the next couple of weeks. But that's great. But really, it's it's such an overwhelming position that we're in right now, just because of the volume of food. It's it's really we're just kind of like the chess movers. It's it's the community. That's the reason that we're able to do this. Yeah. Now you have a program where uh, individuals or community groups can adopt a shelf. Talk about that. Yes, and that's what we're here today. And the adopt a shelf, we have organizations and some family members that have chosen to adopt a shelf throughout the year, and it's usually about a hundred dollar commitment per month. And the VFW, this is their fifth year, I believe, mm -hmm. now doing this. And they kind of give us all the bang for the buck, and they give us the whole $1,200 at one shot. And, you know, it's really, it's my favorite event of the year because I just, I feel honored to be in their presence. That's and fantastic. I really do. I get very emotional about it just because they've given so much. And then at this stage in their life when they could just really kind of be relaxing and enjoying, they don't, they're, they're su it's such an honor. It is. It's overwhelming. That's great. So Chuck Haskins here from the VFW. Talk about why the VFW does this every year. Well, one of the things we do 
every year in the month of May, we have our Buddy Poppy Drive, where we go out to community and we raise funds. And all those dollars that we get go into what we call a relief fund. And 100% of those dollars in the relief fund go out back to the community. Fish being one example. Uh, veterans in need is another example. Uh, this past Christmas, we supported two veterans' families with seven children to make sure they had a Christmas. So all this money that we raise goes back into the community or to the veterans, and one of the best organizations around that helps our community is our fish organization. That five years ago, when they moved in that new building on 24, that it's centrally located for Orient Lake, uh, Oxford, Metamora, and others around the area, off the top of my head. But each of those organizations can come to fish at any time and get the food that they need. That's our goal, is helping people. And the way that five years ago it was rough, today with COVID, it's uh, number, you know, it advanced quite a bit, what, how many people need, actually need to eat. So we're gonna do everything we can to help complete uh, with the uh, uh, $1,200 to fish. And we have an example of that right now. <laughs> We love the big check. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is what good. And through Michelle's organization, hopefully the shelf that we sponsor, which right now is the spaghetti, sp shelf. spaghetti shelf. Yes. And uh, it's a very popular shelf. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It'll get us through 2022 or next to 2023. And what we want like to do is challenge other organizations out there that there's plenty of other shelves that need sponsoring at Fish. And it helps from going out and trying to get the local donations, sponsor a shelf, and then you can stock it or fish will stock the shelf, but $1,200 a year or $100 a month. So That's fantastic. Does the ATM take this or? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's great. What's your response to this? It's overwhelming. That's, you know, we've even talked about it then when we were kind of updating. We were like, I wonder if the veterans are still going to, you know, do this because it's been such a commitment that, you know, you can't take anything for granted in the way the economy has been. And then one, two, three, we got the phone call and they were like, absolutely, we're going to do it again. So it's, it's such a wonderful gift. And what's nice is that they give us the cash because then our shopper that does our purchasing, Ron Wood, is so good with the money that really he'll turn this $1,200 probably into $1,400 because he is so good with the shopping and will go out of his way. So it's really that, you know, I always tell everybody, whatever dollar you give us, I can guarantee you Ron Wood's going to turn it into more than just a dollar. And this helps with the perishables, the dairy, meat, produce, that sort of thing. Uh, well, this particular, this money well, will just be, but somewhere. yes, cash donations yes absolutely the cash donations because we do buy fresh fruits and vegetables and then our meat and then anything that we purchase through gleaners has to be cash and then our eggs and our, you know, bread and, and all that. Yes, that's all from our cash donations. Yes. That's fantastic. Thanks a lot for coming out. Anything you want to add? It's Sue, right? Right, Sue. No, Michelle handled it very well. <laughs> She's our spokesperson and does a nice job. Awesome. We're just very great, very grateful for organizations and people like this awesome thank you thanks guys thank thanks fish for the work that you do in the community thank, thank you, you. Oh, yeah. it's, it's just, we're not done yet we're yeah. still going this is a blending of my two favorites yes this is it's just it's overwhelming yeah this is this is a golden day for fish yes yes awesome all right let's throw it back to the studio <laughs> All right, back in the ON TV studios, um, what a donation to fish by the VFW guys. $1,200. They've been doing that for a number of years, though. They sponsor a shelf, like you heard in the video, uh, the spaghetti shelf, I think. It's one of the most popular shelves they have at uh, the fish food pantry. So $1,200. Uh, we're going to add that to our total today. So if we're at 61 currently, and I think uh, you saw that whirlwind live uh, uh, segment out in the lobby. Um, we had a, while we, just when we went off air with those guys to play the video, we had a $500 donation come in or it's on its way in. So thanks to uh, Chris Barnett and Matt Pfeiffer for coming out and having fun on Facebook uh, on multiple channels and being live on cable at the same time. I don't think that's ever happened. So today programming, let's get into it. We, uh, we are at what, 1239, a little bit later than anticipated. Uh, to get to our first programming segment, but don't worry, history all day here in the studio. And uh, 
without further ado, since it's History Day, it's the last day of the food drive, um, we thought it'd be fun to learn something about our hometown and what's going on in the past and present, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna toss it over to Joe Johnson and his special guest here in the studio for our programming segment. Take it away, Joe. Thanks, Ian. Joe Johnson here with what I will call Lake Orion History 101. And I'm joined by Jimmy Johnson, the creator of Where Living is a Vacation, uh, social media presence. I really enjoy following it on social media, all the great photos and everything you dig up. Uh, Jimmy, tell me a little bit about uh, where uh, Living is a Vacation came from. Well, first of all, thanks thanks for the invite, and um, great to help support the food drive. Um, so yeah, we're living this vacation uh, as a passion project. It uh, started just only a few years ago when um, seeing so much negativity in the news, and like, ah, oh, there's got to be some fun stuff we can share, like nostalgia, fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went ahead and uh, just started posting something on Facebook about just a little snippet of history. And uh, from there, it just kept going on and on and on, and people started liking it more and more, and like, oh, there's more history. So it's like one of those things you chase down a rabbit hole. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so then the Facebook led to a website and videos and store and all this fun stuff. So it's great to follow your passion. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I came out to this community um, not quite 30 years ago, but we're getting there. And it, it's been fun learning about the history of Lake Orion. Like, I didn't realize when I first came out here the, the history of Park Island on the lake. And uh, I'm always learning something new about the history of Lake Orion. And it's just fascinating. And for, I'm sure most of you know watching that uh, Lake Orion was a resort town. Uh, there were cottages out here and people would board the train from Detroit and Pontiac and come out to Lake Orion to, you know, spend a, a weekend or spend the summers out here. Uh, um, Jimmy Hoffa had his uh, summer home out here. He would come out here to Lake Orion. Um, so it has a long history of a resort town and, and such an amazing history. Um, today, I think we're going to start off focusing a little bit about uh, uh, Lake Orion schools, an amazing history of schools in Lake Orion. So, uh, Jimmy, get us started with what you have. Yeah, yeah. So first, we have the, the first schoolhouse, uh, 1844. I have a picture here. It's actually was located. The house is still there at Church and Anderson Street. Yeah, it's, uh, I drive past it all the time. It's a residence now, and uh, it's amazing that that's still standing. Yeah, so I have a picture of it here. If you can cue it up. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, a, yeah, what, it looks almost like a barn, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a barn house. But uh, yeah, it's a residence now, and they had uh, a bunch of smaller houses uh, a long time ago uh, scattered throughout the city. Uh, just made it easier for the school children to get back and forth. So that, like Hallworth School, is an example of one. Uh, Can you go to house. the other laptop, Joey? Other laptop. There it is. It's yeah, up on the screen is. now. There it is. So yeah, there's a picture of the the first schoolhouse, 1844. So yeah, located at Church and Anderson. Um, so, like I said, many schoolhouses that were scattered throughout the city. So it was great to um, um, it was great for s children to go to these smaller schoolhouses and easier to travel back and forth. So, like like Harvard School. We got to get in there sometime. I th um, uh, one of these days we'll have to reach out to the homeowner there and see if they can give us a tour. Yeah. Uh, what a what a historic uh, gem. Yeah. Um, so this brings us to like the uh, the next school. So 1893. So this school here, I'll bring it up. Uh, let's see. All so right. right here. Okay. So notice this building is not around in the area right now. Um, Lift your mic up just a little bit. Oh. How about that? So that's okay. considered Lake Orion's first high school, right? Yep. First high school built in 1893. It's a four-story school, and. Uh, Again, at the corner, Elizabeth and Lapeer. Um, and it served grades 1 through 12, so big spans. Um, it was high up above on the hill, so it had a good view of the city skyline. Uh, it had a large bell tower at the top. Um, but back in the, um, the 30s, the, with the Works Progress Administration, with FDR uh, putting people back to work, they knocked it down. And um, due to they're expanding this more students 
so they moved on. Now, did that stand where the, the Elizabeth Street School is currently standing, or was that in a different part of town? I believe it was in that same general area. might have been even next door, because kind of like the, the times crossed over. Mm, okay. What a beautiful school. Just a gothic-looking school. Um, it's just amazing. It's a shame that it's not still there today, but uh, what an awesome uh, piece of history. There. Yeah. Yeah, it would be uh, great to kind of see that school again in more pictures of it. But it's the only picture that I could actually find online of it. <laughs> yeah, that, I've only seen one photo of that school. There's got to be more out there, but that's the only one I've ever seen. Yeah. So, so afterwards, uh, we move on to 1927, the, the school that we know now, uh, the Elizabeth Street School, uh, served as the, the high school for quite some time for K through 12. Uh, the one pictured here. Yeah, you just recently posted this picture on social media and it just blew me away. Uh, it looks like a movie set or something with the, the vintage cars parked in that lot. And it's amazing looking at that photo, how little things have changed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You still see the, the fa facade, the architecture still there, uh, the, the entrance, how the rounded entrance is still there. So yeah, this, this was an awesome find. Um, this one's actually a photo from uh, 1930. And um, okay. next door to it too, there was like a smaller uh, schoolhouse mm -hmm. as well. Um, so through the years, you know, it was in operation through the 90s. I had the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. Um, now speaking yeah. of that, um, you know, the school is still standing today. It's known as the Eamon Center today, named after Fred Eamon. And in 2014, there was a, a group of entrepreneurs who purchased the building and had some plans for it. They were going to be residential units, uh, maybe a restaurant in the gymnasium. Unfortunately, that didn't quite uh, pan out. But we do have video uh, when uh, they purchased it, and we actually walked through the building. So I'm going to start the video here. Um, and uh, it was, my, I don't know if it was my, no, it wasn't my first time in the school because I had gone inside the school when it was the Boys and Girls Club and that sort of stuff. But yeah. here's a look at the interior of the school. Uh, there's the gymnasium. Um, and uh, here's some footage uh, from 1995 where they held a senior citizen prom in the gymnasium. And, um, <laughs> and that's when it was still operational where the Boys and Girls Club was, was being used uh, yeah. there. And the kids would play basketball and board games. And high school yeah. students uh, came together with senior citizens and had a little prom there in the gymnasium, which is so cool yeah. to see now. Uh, there's the group that purchased it. Um, it's cool to see the old Orion High School uh, still appear above the door. Yeah, look at the old chalkboards uh, old and cabinets storage and chalkboards. And cabinets. Uh, and there's that oh, logo. There's, that, there's logo. that logo. Now you have a picture of that logo. Yeah. And um, since I shot my video, they have since removed uh, that logo from the floor. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so here's a here's a close-up picture um, of that uh, dragon mascot and uh, it was actually originally drawn uh, in 1945 wow. uh, by Patricia Olson who went who attended the school um, and then later on it was painted uh, in 1947 by Reuben Barclay and John Doerr and they were the class of 1950. But like Joe was saying, I was so glad they were able to cut it out Move it, they had a parade with it, I believe. Yeah, so now it gets transported like on some sort of a trailer that has it encased in plexiglass or something. And so that'll be preserved for future generations. Because yeah. you can imagine if they were to leave it there on the floor, people would be walking on it and it would be oh, yeah. lost to time. Yeah. Uh, they so incorporated it's cool. this actually into uh, the, the high school's gym. You'll see it on the wall on the concourse as you run around. They have it behind the glass. It looks great. So now the village has some major plans for that building. Uh, they're going to do some construction and, and some things around the building, and they're going to incorporate this historic building uh, into those plans. So that's really exciting. I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how they're going to move forward with that. Yeah, our historical society has been, uh, uh, they got to tour the building, which is great, and uh, learning news about how they're going to incorporate the blackboards and, yeah. and the gym area. It's, it's amazing. I can't wait to see the final. Awesome. We have just a couple minutes left before we go over to LOHS. We're going to throw it to LOHS in a few minutes, but okay. uh, what do you got next? Uh, the next school I wanted to cover, which was interesting to me, is the Proper School. 
so uh, built in 1927. It's located uh, on Baldwin Road uh, near one of the roundabouts. Um, right now it's, a, it's still a center. The building's still there. And let me bring up a picture. Okay, so I have a picture of the building. It's, it's still there, like I said. And um, it's in Gingerville, uh, built in 1927. And little, little factoid, I didn't know that it was actually first called the, uh, the Coolidge, uh, the, Calvin, uh, the Coolidge School, mm. after President Calvin Coolidge. And uh, the story was, here's like a, in the picture, you'll see like what's behind uh, that copper sign there. But uh, yeah, I guess in the area, Calvin Coolidge at the time did something that irritated the Democratic Party and the Democratic <laughs> uh, people in Orion. So they covered that up, called it the Proper School after John and Charlotte Proper, which uh, they were one of the first to homestead land on Baldwin. So yeah, that bronze sign is, is still there now, I believe. And I, I don't know if they all ever peel that sign back to see what's behind it, but I'm very excited about that if they ever So do. you said that's <laughs> over in the Gingerville area? Yep. That's yeah, awesome. Right on Baldwin, I'll have yeah. To check it out. Yeah. Um, you know, since uh, I've come to this community, I've witnessed history when it comes to the schools. Uh, we covered the groundbreaking ceremony for both uh, Orion Oaks, which is located right next to us, uh, and the high school. I remember what a big deal it was when uh, they had a, a millage um, to build the new high school and swimming pool. And so I was there for the groundbreaking and, and the grand opening and all that stuff. So, uh, so not only is there an amazing history here in Lake Orion, but we've witnessed history over the last uh, couple of decades here in Lake Orion, and uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come. I wish we can get into the first day of school at the new <laughs> high school and everything. We'll save that for another time. Uh, but we'll be back in a little bit to talk more about the history of Lake Orion. Uh, in the meantime, speaking of Lake Orion High School, uh, they're getting set up to do their live LOAM broadcast. So um, they're going to go live in a few minutes, and we'll throw you over uh, to the high school in a little bit. Uh, Jimmy, great talking to you about schools. You're going to yeah. stick around, and oh, yes. uh, we'll pick it up uh, in a little bit uh, later. We're going to be going live till 2 o'clock. Stay tuned. Coming up on today's LOAM, a look at the Scholastic Art Competition, LOHS's first virtual career fair, and a new edition of LOIQ. Stay tuned! Good afternoon, Lake Orion. Today is Friday, February 11th, 2022. I'm Lexi Davis. And I'm Brian Donahue. This is LOAM. This year's results of the Scholastic Regional Art Competition are here. Students who submitted art competed with nearly 5,000 submissions across southeastern Michigan. 24 students here at LOHS won a total of 54 awards. We spoke to some of the winners to hear about the process and how the competition works. It sends the piece to the national level for judging, and it, um, it's everyone in the United States. And then a silver key is just for the region, but it's also really good. And then honorable mentions are kind of like the third tier. So I'm in first hour AP art, so I do it during class. So the first one that got the gold key, it probably took like a week or two, probably three weeks because I was sick. And then uh, my Silver Key probably took about like two weeks too. The American Visions nominee award is uh, basically the top of the category that I submitted in. So uh, the photo I won was for digital art. Uh, so essentially the best of the digital art from uh, the region. It is really cool seeing, you know, getting recognized for my work and, you know, some motivation that will keep me continuing to do more, you know, art in the future. Actually, a lot of the stuff that I submitted was from my previous portfolio from last year, from AP Studio Art. I was able to get an honorable, or no, actually a silver key for one of my pieces this year. It was, it was a long process over time, but it was well worth it. I submitted some of the stuff I did last year, so it was a lot of like hours put into it, but <laughs> over like the course of a couple years. 
Um, it's really cool. I've never won like any gold keys before and that's like the highest one. It's nice, it's really rewarding. You know, a lot of the times you kind of just make it and then take it home. So there's not much of a rewarding process to it, but it's nice to submit it somewhere and know that people enjoy it. Congratulations to all 24 students who won an award for their art. The LOHS Lost and Found is once again at its breaking point. Main Office Secretary Mrs. Mardlin says it's time to donate everything that's been left behind. So she's giving you until the end of next week to grab any items you may have forgotten about. After next Friday, everything remaining will be donated to a local charity. Some of the items include jackets, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and drink containers. The LOHS Lost and Found is located in the main office. The LOHS Career Center is hosting an interactive live career day webinar at Lake Orion High School next Friday. 18 industry professionals will be pre presenting on topics that represent growing career fields, such as autonomous vehicles, road construction, landscaping and design, and medical research. Students must complete the mandatory selection survey on what live topic they would like to be a part of. The survey can be found on Teams, in students' emails, or just scan the QR code on the screen. It must be filled out and submitted by the end of school today. All students are required to attend one of these incredible career presentations. Contact Ms. Tara Hall in the Career Center with any further questions. The biggest football game of the year is this Sunday. Super Bowl 56 features the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. And this weekend's game is the subject of today's LOIQ. Here's Will Hoovener. What's going on, Lake Orion? I'm Will Hoovener, and this is LOIQ, our very own trivia game show on LOIM featuring contestants from around the school. Today, our contestant is senior Adam Hayfley. How you doing today, Adam? I mean, my entire high school experience has culminated to this moment, so I'm doing quite well. Thank you. <clears throat> that sounds pretty serious. Well, I'm going to ask you three trivia questions. If you get one question correct, you'll receive a free cookie or popcorn from the school store. If you get two questions correct, you'll receive a free drink or snack from the Rita Latte Cafe. And if you get all three questions correct, you'll receive a free large jet pizza from Jet's Pizza. Sunday is Super Bowl 56. Are you ready to play, Adam? For sure. Let's go. All right, first question. Where is the Super Bowl being played at? Is it A, New York, B, Los Angeles, C, Detroit, or D, Chicago? I'm going to have to go with B. That is correct. The correct answer, B, Los Angeles. This will be the first year since 1993 the Super Bowl will be held in L.A. Next question. What year was the first Super Bowl? Is it A, 1967, B, 1968, C, 1969, or D, 1970? Uh, I'm going to go with A. That is correct. <clears throat> the correct answer, A, 1967, the Green Bay Packer, Packers beat the Kansas City Chiefs on January 15, 1967, with a final score of 35 to 10. Last question, which team has the most Super Bowl wins? Is it A, Green Bay, B, Buffalo Bills, C, Kansas City Chiefs, or D, New England Patriots? Uh, I'm going to go with D. Did you say D? D, yeah. Yeah, the correct answer, D. The New England Patriots, they've won six times most recently in 2019. Pittsburgh also won six times. Congratulations, you got three questions out of three correct. That means you win a free pizza from school or from Jets. <clears throat> Thank you for playing with us today, Adam. Would you like to give anyone a shout out? Oh uh, yeah, shout out my boy Will. Hoovy, uh, Hoove on the move, Mr. Bill Will Tough. Uh, shout out the Shell Boys, y'all know who you are. Um, shout out Santa's Reindeer, that's Hong Bing Tang, Clayton Kuiper, Luke and Blake Pearden, Horatio and Sam Lopez, Michael Dracos, and John Logston. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> awesome. Well, if you would like to be on LOIQ in the future, send a direct message to our Twitter, at DragonCast, or to our Instagram, at Dragon Broadcasting. That's all I've got for you today. Have a great week in LO. For WDBC, I'm Will Hoovener. Your seniors of the day are Andrew Coleman Jr., Bridget Finneran, Charlie Snellgrove, 
Jordan Splane. And Kaylin Williams. That's it for today's show. Tune in next week for a look at the Symphonic Celebrations concert and the newest edition of SHS. Have a flirty Friday, L.O. All right, back here in the Owen TV studio, live for the 2022 Owen TV food drive for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. Great newscast by the students over at Lake Orion High School and the Dragon Broadcasting Program. Been around for over three decades doing great work, sending kids off in careers in broadcasting and multimedia design, editing, shooting, you name it. Uh, that program has done it. Uh, we want to update our collection total. If you can see on the screen, it burped since the last time we were on the air. It is now $6,600, so we are above our $6,500 goal. Thank you so much. Uh, Matt Pfeiffer and Chris Barnett were uh, live streaming on Facebook for several minutes after we went off live with them, and they garnered that $500 donation. So thank you so much, and we're still collecting. Uh, it's going to go through, uh, programming goes through 9 p.m. today, uh, but if you want to drop off things in person, you can do so uh, until 5 p.m. tonight. We're taking physical donations. Uh, there's your way to donate. Donate online at orionontv.org or click the uh, ONTV logo or the Food Drive logo, and it'll take you right to the GoFundMe page. Again, that'll be active until about 5 p.m. this evening. Donate in person. Bring your non-perishable items over to the studio at 1349 Joslin Road, which is at the Orion Center. Uh, the big blue building on Joslin Road. You can uh, also don't drop off your uh, check or cash if you'd like to, to uh, help out with the collections here. So uh, before we get in back to the programming, we'd like to uh, show a quick video about uh, the Dragon Broadcasting program. I had, I had the, you know, the pleasure of sitting down <laughs> with Roger Smith, the, the lead instructor on uh, that program at Lake Orion High School to learn more about what they're doing, all the great stuff of that program and the classes the kids can take. So here's a, uh, an interview I conducted, uh, I think it was two days ago with Roger Smith. All right, joined here by Roger Smith from Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting uh, Program. He is the advisor over there and all around great guy and a Spartan to boot, uh, just like me. So we're here at the food drive. Uh, Roger, you guys have been with us since uh, almost day one. I want to say probably the second year of the food drive. You, your students came on board to work with us and now we're pretty much uh, working hand in hand every year uh, on the ONTV food drive, this being our 12th. And uh, tell us a little about uh, your participation with the food drive and how your kids uh, take part. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, as a volunteer at ONTV, I was on the crew the first year, the first couple of years, you know, for the Saturday food drive before the pandemic, you know, like you said, 12 years ago, and sat there thinking while we were doing the, the show that, gosh, my kids, we, you know, we are tethered together through a fiber connection here at the high school to ONTV, which has been a great resource as we kind of help each other. And we thought we should just do our newscast. So, uh, ever since then, we've done uh, a special version of our newscast, or uh, just come, you know, just come straight to us live. If it's even this year, uh, the food drive taking place during the school day, so our newscast, which is over 30 years old, I used to be on the newscast a long time ago. Um, you know, we're, we produce it live during the school day, uh, right, right before one o'clock, uh, and that's the start of the last class of the day on the student schedule here and the whole student body watches and everything. And so we just said, hey, for this year, let's just take straight to it. And you can see how the students see it, not even a special, uh, really customized version, even for the community. But it's been, uh, it's so fun for the kids. You know, we stream the show live. We've been on the web for years and years. And even before that, we've always been live, even if it was just a closed network within the building. But when we talked a couple of weeks ago about we're gonna be part of the, fish food drive and i said you know hey the show is going to be live on ontv throughout the community too that was still special 
which is really cool uh, that the kids saw, you know, yeah, we're on the web across the world, <laughs> but it was still a, an extra little uniqueness that we're going to be on cable, you know, or, you know, through ONTV in the community. So uh, we've tried to collect uh, donations and, and here at the high school, uh, you know, with the way the pandemic's been and, and everything else going on, we knew that students needed an opportunity to donate maybe more than in past years. And at the school, they do get some service hour credit for it as well. But um, you know, students have through the end of the week to stop by our TV studio and drop off items. And we had a huge <laughs> deluge this morning. And thankfully, you guys were able to send the truck over and pick it up because uh, we don't have room. <laughs> we're yeah. not as to set up cameras and everything, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll get more tomorrow and Friday as well. And uh, it's just a great way for the student body to become aware of who the Fish Food Pantry is and ONTV and, and the service that's provided to the community. Absolutely. And we were, you know, we were supposed to be over yesterday uh, to pick up the food. <laughs> and we had it all arranged. Then we had some things that got in the way, so we weren't able to get over there. And, hey, in a stroke of luck, we got, we got kind of lucky to have that delayed uh, to allow that extra food, uh, you know, those donations to get in. Um, so, yeah, uh, 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 an uh-oh moment of we didn't get over there to get the food donations kind of worked out in our favor this year, which is yeah. great. And we saw that we shared the footage and um, shared with the community um, all the donations so far. And I know there's more coming in, and we'll be back out to grab coming. the rest, yeah. right? So uh, yeah. we showed it live as our 12 to 2 slot rolled on, and we were just so impressed that uh, when we said let's fill the van and the school did it it was fantastic and we've always seen that uh uh that participation from lohs uh, you and your crew over there with us like we said we talked about being hand in hand is that those collections are some of the largest and most important collections that we get uh throughout the community so kudos to you and your kids and uh, to be able to have uh, them uh, participate, and and you are a television center right in the high school, that like you said, you can promote and televise your newscasts and give information out. So it, it works both ways. Yet and it's closed inside the building, uh, you know, for the kids to see, but also streamed. But we we're getting a kick out of seeing you guys live. I see it all the time. You know, we talk all the time, but and I see the newscast every day. Uh, but the people at home on, on Comcast don't necessarily get to see it until a replay, uh, you know, a couple hours later. But it's so cool to hear that they're so enthused about, uh, you know, hey, we're live and the community is watching. And it just shows that they care. And uh, the presentation is just top notch. Thanks. Well, and that's what's so funny about it, too, is because, uh, as you know, you see our stuff because you're recording uh, the end of things and, and our broadcasts are on the education channel. And sometimes on ONTV and we partner on so many things together, live sports broadcasts and concerts and everything. And that was like, <laughs> we're always live. That's uh, been a hallmark of our program. My predecessor, Brett Saunders, my teacher, cause I went to school here too. That was uh, you know, a really big important component to him. And it is to me too, when he started our newscast and everything over 30 years ago. And uh, it's just funny that <laughs> we are live anyway. And, the show does air back on uh, ONTV and everything later in the day or the evening, but just it was cool to see the reaction from the students when I said, we're going to be live on <laughs> ONTV. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> so anyway, but no, we're happy to happy to take part. And we try to make the most of uh, the, the resources we have here. We're really, really fortunate. It's uh, difficult to try to convince students uh, of how unique of a setting this is that we have in a amazing broadcast facility at the high school and an amazing public access center in the community that are two or two miles down a dirt road <laughs> to get to each other really yeah. um this does not happen uh in in you know ma the majority of the rest of the state and the country um and so we just try to make the most of it but it's what our community has always known you know look at how far back both of our programs go and yeah, stretch. Just over 30 broadcast. years for ONTV, just over 30 years, right? Yeah. And you guys are longer than that now. And so, yeah, it's it's exciting to see. And, you know, we always get a kick out of it. We, you know, how many times have we sat around chatting about what we can do and how do we push the technology further? How do we get the kids involved? And, and then let the community know what we're doing because sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle. 
Uh, one thing I do want to focus on is that your program isn't stagnant. It's always growing. There's always new things happening. Uh, share with uh, the viewers uh, your new class that you launched this year. It's, it's quite exciting. Yeah, so we've talked about it for a few years, and the process to add a new class uh, takes a little bit of time with curriculum and everything. But, you know, for years, our television production workshop class, which is our capstone, that's the class that produces the newscast and other programs, too. Uh, they've been the ones leading the, the broadcast of sporting events, you know, in the evening, too. And we love doing that. I mean, sports are a huge part of the broadcast industry. It's not the only thing. But the most watched television event of the year, which happens this Sunday, is a sport, you know, <laughs> yeah. at, at least across the U.S. So anyway, we kind of saw that that capstone class was really getting stretched thin, uh, trying to cover everything. And there's a huge part of the industry is that realm of sports. We have a lot of grads that have gone off into that into that realm as well. So we added a couple new sports broadcasting specific classes uh, really to help us do even more games. It allows me to send a small crew to a game without me having to be there because they learn how to set up the equipment and to go on the air and be commentators or be behind the scenes and the research that goes into pregame to learn players' numbers and names and to talk to the coaches ahead of time and to sound knowledgeable um, and to just put a, a – and to remember to keep the ball in the shot. <laughs> Which yeah, big, little hockey. things, right? <laughs> hockey is really hard to do. So, we, you know, it's a great opportunity for the students to learn all those things, but yeah. it just allows us to produce, in partnership with, uh, with ONTV, even more uh, of those programs. And that class uh, gets to incorporate public address announcing as oh, well, okay. which we, we haven't tapped into elsewhere because it's sports broadcasting and communications. So if you come to LOHS, like this winter, for the we only have a few games left because we are coming to the end of the winter sports season already. But uh, you might see students doing PA announcing at freshman or JV basketball games, and that students in that class learning about that as well, uh, and some other things that we talk about. So uh, sports broadcasting is finishing up its first year uh, as we end, end the winter season this year. But I expect it'll continue to grow. Uh, and be a, a, a great new addition to what LOHS has to offer. And that's what I mean when I say so few schools do this. In our, in our community, the culture has just been, well, we have this great program at LOHS and at ONTV, but when you get outside of the community, you realize not many other places do what we do. And when it comes to that sports class, I tried to find – other schools that do this to, to kind of get an idea of what the curriculum would look like and that sort of thing. And Ian, uh, there may not be any more than about a half dozen high schools in the country, Whoa. a sports broadcast type class. And there are all the powerhouses that we often see when it comes to competitions and that sort of thing. And so it's a real, we're, it's very rare to have it. And we're just very fortunate to have the facilities and the ability and, uh, the grant support and the, uh, you know, all, all that side of things and we're able to make it work. Yeah, and, you know, having, uh, like you said, like the technology available to us now and that you can actually have a class like this. You know, uh, at one point technology was huge, it got small, it got huge again, and now it's getting small again, right? So you don't need a big production truck to yeah. pull off a, a hockey game uh, competently, right? You have a backpack with a laptop in it, microphone, mini mixer, internet connection, and here we are. I mean, we're going through Zoom right here. You're at the schools, and we're just going through the Zoom call. And ha just having this available to us just at our fingertips, so easily done and uh, set up really quickly with decent quality, and it, it really brings the community uh, to you know awareness of Hey, there are games. There's, there's, but the, the band concerts, the choir concerts, the yeah. the the uh, signing day presentations. Ceremonies, yeah. Those are great. I love those. I mean, we've we've seen a ton of band concerts. I, I'm a band guy, but the signing days, the the Hall of Fame induction ceremony that you guys cover as students over at the high school is fantastic, or Wall of Fame, I should say, and yeah. those other things, homecoming festivities. You know, live we. We record them. We could air them live. It's it's fantastic. So it really is. I'm trying to think of where do we go now, Roger? <laughs> you know, there's always there's always more. I, I, there's I always more. There's volume, but you go. You have podcasting. Yeah. You have 
um, you know, the broadcast side, the news side, uh, shooting, editing, it's all there. And it, it's really, really cool and uh, to have your Hall of Fame program. Now, we have to make sure we share that. It's a Hall of Fame program uh, recognized uh, in the state of Michigan as being exceptionally um, looked up to as one to model. And uh, so kudos to you and uh, your, your uh, co-teacher, Miss, uh, well, Kathy, uh, a good friend of ours, used to work here at ONTV. And we've all known each other so long that it's, it's great to see the success uh, that you guys are having. And, you know, the partnership for us, it's, it's turned into like this family thing where so it, we can count on each other to say, hey, can you help us with this? Yes, absolutely. And we got kids calling now to potentially work with us here at ONTV. Yep. So it, it all works for everybody. And um, it, it really is, it is so unique um, out there. And we have people calling us from different centers around the Midwest going, what do you do? How do you do this? And said, oh, don't forget, look at the high schools. So it's really great. And uh, what you guys are doing and the kids and um, it's just fantastic. I can't say en uh, enough praise uh, for you guys. It's really great. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us um, about the program? Um, if somebody's watching uh, a parent and they see, hey, my kid's going to be entering uh, Lake Orion High School next year, I believe schedules are due today <laughs> yeah. or they're due soon. Uh, what would you say to a, a parent uh, uh, who saw this to say, why would we consider or why would junior consider signing up for a class like yours? Yeah, no, you're right. And we do need to mention Kathy Srock because uh, yes. she, she definitely is. Uh, she teaches during my off hour in the studio. That's when she has a broadcast class uh, in there. And she's also a Lake Orion grad, just a few years younger than me. So I get to <laughs> I get to have the pick of the classes and then she picks up the rest of the broadcast classes. But she loves it, too. Uh, and she oversees some of our evening shoots and that sort of thing and certainly wouldn't uh, happen without her, too. And you're right, we're very fortunate and have received lots of uh, state and national uh, acclaim. And it's just uh, trying to help the students realize we have a great opportunity in front of us and let's make the most of it uh, with all the resources that are our, at our disposal. But the way students get involved, anybody from an incoming ninth grader, uh, you know, up to uh, the student going into their last year here, the, the, the introductory class is called Broadcast Communications One. And then once you take that class, it's just 10 weeks. Uh, it's a little taste of radio, a little taste of TV, podcasting, video editing. Then it opens up a multitude. We have about, uh, I don't know, six to eight different classes. That's all that I teach. Plus we have Kathy too. Uh, you know, a bunch of classes for kids to choose from, whether it be more of the video editing film track or the live sports track or the news track. So lots of ways to get there. But um, the best way to keep up with us and to learn about our, our classes and our weekly broadcast schedule that we partner with you on is just our website. Uh, our program is Dragon Broadcasting, so we use that name for our website. It's dragonbroadcasting.org. And likewise, on social media like facebook.com slash dragonbroadcasting, um, you know, those are kind of the good places to, to find us on the social media platforms or just the straight web. Uh, we just try to keep the name consistent so everyone can find us easily. Yeah, and for you Dragon Sports junkies out there, that is also the location you go to to sign up and subscribe to the streaming service so you can catch all these uh, Dragon games going on, right? If you can't get out to yeah. the game, you can sign up. You can pay a, a small, a nominal fee uh, to see uh, the game's live stream, and a portion of the profits go back to... Uh, uh, back to the school and to the, the, I think, the athletic department and the video program. So yep. it's a win-win for everybody. You get to see the, the great action going on, the games, and um, you also get to help out uh, the students' programs. Well, Roger, thank you so much for taking a, a couple minutes to step into the studio during our food drive. And um, good luck to you and the rest of uh, uh, your crew over there will be tuning in uh, to your newscast um you know every day that it's aired uh, is it tuesday thursdays and fridays um uh streamed live on your site so uh thank you for tuning in or stopping in and we'll see you next time all right thanks ian thanks everybody all right back in the studio here great interview with roger smith great partner of on tv is a drag broadcasting program just fun guys to work with the students are just a delight working in uh, partnership hand-in-hand -hand with everybody at LOHS is fantastic. So, 
All right, uh, we have some housekeeping here. We are at 6600 the $500 donation that came in during their live segment in the lobby with uh, Matt Pfeiffer and Chris Barnett has hit. So we are uh, over our 6500 collection goal, but we can push it higher. Come on, keep those donations coming. Everything helps fish um, and is for fish. Uh, okay, so we want to say thank you to our sponsors once again today. Without them, we would have nothing. So uh, here's a little video about our sponsors for Friday. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2022 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Canterbury Village, located at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. They're a first time sponsor to the Food Drive and donated $1,000. You can find more information about Canterbury Village by visiting their website, canterburyvillage.com or give them a call at 248-931-1900. Meyer of Auburn Hills, located at 800 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. They are a returning sponsor for the food drive, donating $900 toward our goal. For more information about Meyer, give them a call at 248-393-5100 or visit Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 99011 Main Street in Royal Oak. They're a longtime sponsor for the food drive. This year, they donated $500 to the drive. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a three-day sponsor thanks to a generous $300 donation to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, Kroger.com, or give them a call at 248-393-0765. Donnie Steele for State Representative, candidate for Michigan State Representative 54. This is her second year helping with the food drive as a one-day sponsor. For more information, you can check out her website, DonnieSteele.com. Culver's, located at 4963 Interpark Drive North in Lake Orion. Culver's is a return partner to the food drive and are keeping our crew fed. For more information, you can give them a call at 248-276-2222 or visit their website at Culver's.com. And Home Depot, located at 2600 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Home Depot is a longtime sponsor of the Owen TV Food Drive. This year they donated $100 to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Home Depot, take a look at their website, homedepot.com. You can also give them a call at 248-393-9990. Donnie Steele for State Representative is a second year sponsor of the Owen TV Food Drive. Here's a video from Donnie about why the food drive is so important. Good afternoon. My name is Donnie Steele. I am the treasurer of Orion Township and a candidate for state representative this year, 2022. Today, I am here on behalf of Fish and on TV's 12th annual food drive. Today is the final day of the food drive and I'm inviting you to drop off any non-perishable food items or consider a monetary donation. All donations will benefit our local Orion Oxford Fish Pantry. Fish is a worldwide philanthropy and has great history. Actually, the acronym of Fish stands for Fellowship and Serving Humanity. This is a great description of what this organization does for our local community. Hopefully, you can help us pass our goal of $5,000 today. If you want to drop off non-perishable food items, visit us at On TV, located at 1349 Joslin with your donation, or you can visit orionontv.org and click on the donate button to make a monetary donation. Thank you. This message is sponsored by Friends of Donnie Steele, and we appreciate your participation. All righty. Back in the studio, thank our sponsors. Again, we can't thank them enough. 16 sponsors this year, uh, a record, just absolutely amazing. So 
Um, thank you for them to get us to where we are today and all the other donations we've uh, collected throughout the week. We thank all of our donator, uh, donators. It's been a long week. I've been on air a lot. Uh, so uh, anyway, 6,600 collected. We're, can we push it to 7,000? I think we can. Uh, real quick, where can you donate? On our website, orionontv.org. Head on over there, click on the Food Drive logo, and you can go to our GoFundMe account. Again, it's open till 5 p.m. this evening. And then you can donate in person. Come on down to the studio, 1349 Joslin Road, and you can donate your uh, non-perishable items right in person. Drop it off here in the uh, offices. Uh, ONTV offices, or you can drop it off in a big production van. We're trying to fill the van, and we are pretty close to filling that thing up. Thank you to the uh, Lake Orion High School students and their collection efforts on our behalf. So, yep, multiple ways to help out fish, and every little bit helps, and we need to stock those shells because they are in dire need of those donations this time of year. All right, it is History Day here at the, the ONTV studio and the Food Drive for 2022. And we're going to send it back to Joe Johnson and his special guest to talk more about Lake Orion history. Take it away, Joe. Thanks, Ian. Joe Johnson here uh, with Lake Orion History 101. And joining me is Jimmy Johnson from where, uh, what is it? Where, <laughs> where, where living, living is a vacation. Oh, oh my God, Chris <laughs> Barnett's going to where living is a vacation, man. It's on all the sides. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for joining us uh, again. Yes. Uh, remind me, what, what's your history in this community? Well, see, I'm. That's because they call it a transplant. I guess I grew up in Clarkson, but moved here in uh, 2003. And uh, just like ever since, you know, my kids go to school here, uh, work here. My business is in the community, and uh, it's just it's just great. It's just great to see like everybody around like noticing me and saying, hey, you're the history person. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, I forget. Sometimes I'm wearing the shirt, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's always fun. People come up to me and want to find out about their house or like, can you find this address? What happened here? So it, it's a lot of fun. It's like, take it as a mission every time. <laughs> yeah, and so much history here in Lake Orion. And a lot of the homes in the village uh, just go way back and have amazing histories. and. Uh, notable people who are now buried in our Lake Orion uh, cemeteries uh, lived in those homes and uh, it's so great that uh, so much of the history of Lake Orion has been preserved uh, throughout the years and uh, it's really great to just walk through the village and uh, areas of Lake Orion uh, to experience that history. Um, now just recently on uh, February 1st uh, Orion Township uh, had a big uh, open house and ribbon cutting ceremony um, where they uh, opened their new uh, um, uh, municipal complex. And I was there with the camera and, um, uh, you know, like I said, we, we capture history here at ONTV uh, in addition to talking about the past, but there's history going on all the time. And so the municipal complex just uh, opened up beautiful new facility located on uh, Scripps, right off of uh, Joslin, uh, Joslin and Scripps. Um, and they're going to be uh, demolishing the former location, former Township Hall. That's going to be kind mm -hmm. of reappropriated into Municipal Park there. Um, but this is a historic moment, a, a brand new municipal complex, uh, new boardrooms. They had their first meeting a uh, couple of weeks prior to the grand opening. Um, but it's just an amazing facility, amazing technology, uh, wide open, bright, uh, brightly lit. Um, so I thought we would uh, use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about the history of Town Hall and Village Hall uh, here in Lake Orion. Um, so prior to uh, Orion Township and all that stuff, we can go all the way back. I see you have a photo standing by. There's yeah. a there's a uh, brick uh, in the old town hall in downtown Lake Orion where 313 Pizza now stands um, that says 1900 on it. 1900, correct? yeah. So there are some buildings that date earlier than that in downtown uh, Lake Orion. There's mm -hmm. uh, where where a Bean to Go is right now. That used to have a sign out of this at 1881 on it. Yeah. Um, so that that was a bank, and that goes way back. Um, tell us about yeah. this uh, photo that you have here in front of you. So yeah, with the, this photo here is the Township Hall, 1939. So here's a snapshot in time. Here you see the firefighters, and uh, has a list of all the firefighters' names. The last names uh, many have um, 
have family that are still in Lake Orion, which is great. So yeah, this building now has the same facade, same, it still says Town Hall 1900, and uh, now home 313 Pizza next door, uh, the Heritage Spinning and Weaving. But uh, I just absolutely love this photo. I think they have it in their restaurant too. So it's it's a very, very nice snapshot in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The village offices were there for a long time before they moved over to the church on Church Street. Um, but it's, it's really great that um, initially, and I have some video here if we want to go to it. Initially, when the village offices moved over uh, to the church, uh, it was Lockhart's Barbecue that moved into that building. Let's take a look at this video here. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, Drew cutting the ribbon on Lockhart's Barbecue. <clears throat> and uh, it was really surprising to me that the village offices had moved out of that building because that had been village offices for such a long time. And you'll see some video coming up here in a moment uh, that shows. Look, now here's, yep, here's that here same building Hall. with a <laughs> horse-drawn fire uh, truck. There's some of the village offices uh, I shot back in 2014. Uh, the, the police department was located in that building as well. As a matter of fact, former chief uh, Jerry Nars, he says that his office is now the men's room yeah. at 313. <laughs> um, there's the rear entrance of, of the building, which is now yeah. Lockhart's Barbecue. And, and like I said, it's really awesome that they've embraced their history. You'll see um, historic photos and archival photos uh, hanging on their walls. Um, they opened up that uh, that second level to uh, people, yeah. and uh, let's see if I love I can... how they worked worked in the brick facade into yeah. the inside as well. So here's some more. Uh, let me jump ahead to a couple of uh, more historic photos. There, look at this. This is amazing. This goes way back. Yeah. Um, this is similar to the one that you had. Um, yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. I haven't see seen that. One. Evolve yeah. over time. Look at that. Hiller's department store to, huh. to the right there. Um, so some really amazing history. Uh, we recreated this photo that you see here with the fire department. We went out there and oh, parked yeah. the fire trucks right mm -hmm. in front of the building and tried to recreate that historic photo and the township had uh, pulled out a drone and got some aerial shots and stuff. So yeah, that's an amazing photo. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's such a historic building and it's had an amazing life as town hall and and uh, village offices and then uh, a number of businesses. Um, but uh, yeah, go in and experience uh, the, the history. Yeah. Now you have a uh, photo of another town hall. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, this was another town hall uh, pictured here in 1956. So this is at 571 South Lapeer Road. So before this used to be a nightclub, a dance hall uh, in the mid thirties and eventually a sheriff station. It was a senior center. So it got repurposed over and over and, uh, until Jacobson's bought it uh, in 1996. But uh, yeah, I think for on from here, I believe, Joe, the next one was 1974, which is the one they just moved out of. Uh, yeah, Dawson, yeah. I we'll talk about that one yeah. in a second. I actually have a video of the former township hall. You can see the signage on the building says uh, Orient Township Community Center. Um, when the Sheriff's Department uh, opened up their Orion Township substation, it was actually at this facility, this building. Uh, it looks like something out of the Old West. I mean, yes. it has <laughs> such a long history. Um, and, uh, and so the, town sh or the Sheriff's Department substation operated out of that. Um, and eventually they moved out of this building into the former Township Hall. There's Brad Jacobson who ended up uh, purchasing that building and initially Brad um, used that building for storage uh, but eventually they just ended up taking a wrecking ball to it and uh, totally demolished it um, but you'll see some pictures here or some video here in a moment of uh, of the building when it housed uh, the sheriff's department and uh, I'll never forget I got kind of a funny story where uh, they were asking for mm -hmm. a police millage and uh, I went out on a ride along with the sheriff's department to shoot some video. And while I was riding along with the, uh, with the deputies, we witnessed an accident. A motorcycle crashed into the back of a van. So I'm catching it all on video. And they end up arresting the driver of the van 
who had an, a warrant out for his arrest. Oh, wow. And so all of a sudden I realized I was in the back seat and they put him in the back seat with me and took me back to uh, <laughs> the, the substation. Um, and so there's uh, some of the offices there of uh, the previous township hall where, like I said, they're going to be taking yeah. a wrecking ball to the previous township hall. Yeah. Uh, early on in the 90s, that, that council chamber had some really garish colors, mm -hmm. oranges and yellows and things like that. It had a, a leftover from the 70s, I guess. It had that sort of a vibe. Yeah. Uh, there's Doug Brown, former township supervisor. Um, here's some more outside shots of that old uh, sheriff's department substation with the, uh, oh, the yeah. cars out back and uh, an amazing history there. Again, it was kind of a shame to, to see him take the wrecking ball to this building, even yeah. though it just felt out of place there on Lapeer Road. It, yeah. uh, uh, I'm glad the one on Joslin, though, is going to, once they take a wrecking ball to that one, yeah. it'll be returned back to green space. So, I mean, that's a, a, a great park already, but to add that green space back in is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, what else you got? Yeah, so, just to go back to what you were talking about, uh, the um, Bean to Go. Uh, it just sparked a memory of it being the Orion State Bank. And um, after the Orion State Bank, uh, there was a restaurant that they opened in there. And uh, they ended up calling it the Vault Restaurant. I believe it's the Vault Restaurant. And um, there's an actual bank vault, obviously, because it was a bank. And they tried to incorporate, uh, they wanted to remove it out of the restaurant, but they couldn't. So they ended up making it a little uh, a dining room in there, and they put a table in there, and you can eat in the vault. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So is it still there in a bean to go, or did they? I don't know. I don't I'm know if they curious. ever dismantled it. I mean, when you yeah. walk in, you you can't really see where that vault would be, but uh, but even their menu was like uh, a bank statement. It had all the the wines listed, and yeah. So they really uh, just tapped in leaned into the uh, the bank feel. <laughs> yeah, I know that uh, when it was a bank, uh, someone told me a story that uh, there was a bank robbery that uh, they went in, they robbed the bank and took off and the people that were in the village at the time all gave chase and chased oh, down the wow. bank robbers and stuff. So <laughs> Lake Orion had its Bonnie and Clyde style bank robbery back in the day. Yeah, definitely, I didn't yeah. know about that. Now, um, one more thing about uh, Town Chapal Village yeah. Hall. So, uh, Village Hall offices were in that town hall building on Flint Street in downtown Lake Orion. And then uh, a number of years ago, they moved over into the church on Church Street. Hmm. I have some video here of uh, the, the opening ceremony, the grand opening of um, the village offices moving over <coughs> to that building. And, Really, if, if it wasn't for the village offices moving into that church, I think that's what sort of saved this building because it was dilapidated. Um, they wouldn't allow you to enter the church because you might have fallen through the floor. So the oh, act wow. of village offices moving into this church helped preserve this building and they went in and they shored it up and turned it into uh, the council chambers and village offices. Uh, mm -hmm. the, um, the police department uh, occupies that space with them as well, the, the yeah. village police department. Um, and so you can see the interiors of that church now. Um, they really salvaged that building and it's yeah. uh, really amazing what they've done there. The front porch looks familiar too, isn't it? When they had a movie filmed, I remember. Yes, they did. Uh, the uh, Nain Rouge, yeah. uh, what was it, uh, Dawn of something. Yeah. Um, but they did film uh, a film, uh, a movie there, Jerry Narsh, our police. The star, I heard, police yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it tells the story of the Nain Rouge, which is a long time Detroit tradition of a, a little, uh, pixie or something that used to cause trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so they filmed a, a scene there and uh, there's Darwin McCleary, our former village supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it was interesting to see how they were able to save this uh, building and, and uh, move the township offices into it, so. Yeah, that's All interesting. Right. What else you got? So yeah, I'm, we're gonna go back in the time, farther back in the time. <laughs> so uh, early 1900s, so Park Island, the amusements. Um, you've heard of the Thriller roller coaster that was on Park Island. And this Thriller roller coaster here, as you notice, you see like the big name on, which I 
I don't know if that was ever saved, Lake Orion Coast or Thriller. Uh, yeah. That would be great if that was saved. But um, yeah, on Park Island they had, you know, obviously swimming, powerboat tours, penny arcade, uh, dancing, roller skating. It had all sorts of fun um, stuff to do on the island. And many vacationers, this was considered up north back back when. Yeah. So this was vacation land. So coming up here was, you see, they're all dressed to the nine, go on this roller coaster. Um, you know, in the in the thirties, um, well, actually mid 1900s they dismantled uh, the thriller and they actually used and repurposed the wood to create a, like a toboggan run with it as well so it's good to see that you know after its age it uh, was reused yeah yeah apparently uh, there were several fires uh, on Park Island the, the dance hall had caught on fire and um, and after several fires they just decided to sell the property and they built subdivisions there but uh yeah amazing uh -huh. history and i've talked to uh senior citizens who uh used to go there used to go to park island and uh, oh, the okay. date and play the games mm -hmm. and ride the rides and the carousel and all that stuff so yeah i don't know if there's many people around today that uh actually step foot on there uh when it was park island but i've heard the stories and this one couple that I that I knew, they had souvenirs that said, you know, uh, Park Island, uh, you know, little things they would win for, you know, yeah, knocking down yep. the pins or whatever. So yep. pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. So there's another like the the boating too. Um, so here pictured is the the city of Orion boat, which before it was named that it was called the Chautauqua uh, boat. And uh, originally the Chautauqua boat could carry 300 passengers had an orchestra and a dance floor on board. So picture that, picture this two story with an orchestra <laughs> dancing happening. And there's probably lots of movement happening on this boat. Um, the boat eventually capsized with the high winds and then they end up rebuilding this boat uh, to what oh. you see here, which is the, the city of Orion. Um, so after the demand died down and less uh, vacationers came up here, um, the boat was actually broken into pieces along with all the other passenger boats uh, and a lot of that wood was um, put into the lake and the shore on Oak Lane hmm. so back in the 30s so I'm, I just wonder if any remnants of if you get any wood panels that come up in the water <laughs> maybe that's why <laughs> I had heard rumors and again these are just rumors that um, they used to say that one of the boats m may have been sunk just because they, they couldn't salvage it, so they sunk uh, mm. sunk it in the lake. And I've always been curious, those of uh, you who dive uh, on local lakes, I would love to send a diver down uh, in Lake Orion to see what's under the water. Um, there's, there's talk of, yeah. um, they used to have a contest every winter where they would park a, a jalopy on the ice and people would, would it was like a <laughs> raffle and you would pick a date in the spring where that car would drop through the ice and yeah. whoever picked the correct date would win a prize or whatever and i wondered when that car dropped through the ice did they retrieve it or are those cars sitting at the bottom of lake orion right i wonder if we have a dealership of cars at the bottom of lake orion <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get to the bottom of this we yeah. gotta send, uh, send a diver down into lake orion i heard visibility isn't all that great uh, in Lake Orion and it's pretty weedy um, yeah. but gosh wouldn't that be fun to send somebody down there and oh. see what's at the bottom yeah. of the lake now for those of you who might not know um, Lake Orion wasn't one big lake at one time it used to be several smaller lakes but when they dammed Paint Creek they flooded those I think five lakes into one large lake that we enjoy today. So imagine yep. the history Correct. that yep. could be sitting at the bottom of, oh, of yeah. Lake Orion. Even one of those heavy magnets, like one of those strong magnets, I'm sure you'll end up pulling up a car. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, I just brought up another video here. I'll play a little bit of it. Uh, Reva Campbell, uh, whose family owned the marina in Lake Orion, um, they, uh, they, uh, Reva would offer a tour, uh, a tour of the lakes, and it was fascinating, or, or the homes on the lake. And uh, she had really cool, like, archival pieces. Like, if, if Lake Orion was to ever have their own mm -hmm. museum, Reva would be a great source of artifacts for that museum. Uh, I can't remember if I have video of it or not, but one of the artifacts that she brings along on her tour 
was a one-piece wool bathing suit that the women used to wear uh, at, uh, I think it was Bellevue Island. There used to be a hotel there. And uh, the yeah. women, when they would go swimming in Lake Orion, would wear these heavy, there it is right there. Yeah. Uh, it's a heavy wool one-piece bathing suit. That, that's one of the original bathing suits that was worn on uh, when the women yeah. would swim in Lake Orion. Um, so those cottages and everything around the lake are, are really amazing. And um, we may, if we yeah. have time a little bit later, we could talk about uh, the connection that uh, Jimmy Hoffa had uh, to the lake in, in Lake Orion. And um, yeah. and uh, you saw a picture there of the train tracks. We can talk about oh, that. Oh, yeah. There's she's, so much to talk about. She has and, so, met, so many um, artifacts and pieces that she's collected over the years. It's it's amazing what yeah. she has, and especially like one of the prizes from one of the games from Park Island. Yeah. She has. It's like the red glass that says Lake Orion on the, on the side. It's now, you see them going cool. under this bridge. That's the Bellevue Bridge. And at one time, and I have footage of that too, um, is uh, it was a camelback bridge. And it was a big hump, and mm -hmm. when cars would go to Bellevue Island, they would bottom out on the Camelback Bridge. So eventually they had to demolish it, and they yeah. gave it a longer sort of entrance and exit so the cars wouldn't bottom out. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have video of that, and, and uh, yeah. that, that, there's photos of that Bellevue Hotel that are just spectacular. Um, yeah, it's like picturesque out of a, you don't, think it's from Lake Orion, but this yeah. big grand hotel is was on the island. <laughs> yeah, pretty it's, amazing. Yeah. All right, I see you got uh, John Winter up. Uh, he was, I believe, a lakeside resident, wasn't he? Yes. There's a, a yes. His home, I think, still stands. Tell yeah. us a little bit about so John, John Win Winter. John Winter, yeah, that owner of the Lake Orion Summer Homes Company. He's pretty much him and a few other guys got together and purchased the island and created it to be like a fun amusement park area. Mm. So yeah, this, so this picture you'll see like Abraham Lincoln calendar in the back. I mean, <laughs> everything about this, uh, this is just amazing um, how clear this uh, photo is of, of John Winter. Um, so yeah, built the amusement park and uh, created the main landing, which you see over by the railroad tracks uh, where people would get off of the, um, uh, the train to get um, onto the main landing to get on their boat to go to their destination to their cabins along the water and um, and funny I didn't know that I just learned this the other day about there was a the Lakeside Hotel ran from like the 1900s to 1930 uh, it was a little bit north of Greens Park uh, of the main landing and the Lakeside Hotel was owned by the Green family so after they demolished that hotel the um, in honor of the Green family, the Greens Park was named after them. So wow. I didn't know that. And that the Greens Park has become such a hub of the community with Dragon on the Lake festivities taking place there and all sorts of activities and stuff. As a matter of fact, I just covered uh, the Rotary Club's Ice Golf Cup uh, Challenge yes. <laughs> where they put holes uh, in the ice uh, to golf and uh, and mm -hmm. so they had several and you sponsored one of the holes tell us about that yeah so um, there was two holes on the ice so graphic takeover my company was hole number one on the ice and uh, this year uh, with the rotary we did um, an adopt a hole program where a business can adopt uh, one of the holes they can make it fun do whatever they want to do with the hole and make it fun and interesting so uh, ours was on the lake and uh, people had to chip off from the shoreline onto the lake and then I think probably what 10 to 15 strokes later <laughs> to make it on in uh, in the hole. So, but uh, yeah, lots of fun with the Sunrise Rotary Group. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the wind was whipping. Here I have oh, yes. some I have some video of the ice cup uh, challenge that we just recorded. Um, people dress in colorful costumes. Uh, things kicked off uh, over by Children's Park. Uh, with the with the Sunrise Rotary Club, and uh, they set up holes all over the village, um, and uh, mm -hmm. the, there's there was a hole, so people chipped from the sidewalk off of Broadway, over Paint Creek, uh, into uh, where the the hole was uh, over by Cookies and Cream. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, just really neat, and it's a fun way to explore uh, downtown Lake Orion, and it was a, a, a rather pleasant day too. Yeah, it's like one. It's one of our. Um, I'm part of the Rotary as well, so that is one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. So, um, yeah, we do like the Beds for Kids program uh, yeah. in Lake Orion. 
Uh, and the rooftop access above Main Street bicycles, uh, they actually oh, have yeah, a whole they made set it up fun. up there. So. It's so much fun, and we have like awards for like most spirited, and longest drive, and closest to the pin. So, yeah, yeah. So that day, if you saw a bunch of sleds being tugged around with alcohol and <laughs> and lots of uh, people laughing, yeah, that was us. That was ice cream. <laughs> Here we are in Greens Park. Uh, shooting onto the lake and uh it was a, a very fun and, and pleasant day so yes yes yeah. indeed <laughs> so all right what you what do you got next so what we got next we're gonna fast forward and we're gonna talk about where some of the celebrities or famous people that come out of lake orion and uh this one just learned about probably about a year and a half ago uh, john henson uh, he was traded to Detroit in actually 2020. So in an interview, they didn't know. He went to um, Lake Orion Schools. He wow. was, went to Orion Oaks, actually. And um, when I posted this on Facebook, uh, they were talking about, like, oh, yeah, I remember. I remember him. He, he got in trouble a lot for hanging on the rims <laughs> at, at Orion Oaks. So I was like, oh, wow, no way. So it's like come full circle of um, um, from going from, just an interest in basketball to an NBA player. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's so hard to do, you know, and when you have a young one in your family and you're like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they go, I want to play basketball. I want to play football. It's like, have a backup plan. So for someone yeah. to succeed, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I kind of wonder how tall he was in elementary. <laughs> he looked pretty tall there. Um, this next one, this actress on the actress on the Drew Carey show, Cynthia Watro, so hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. Um, born in 68, also from Lake Orion, um, from Lake Orion High School. She was in shows like Lost, The Drew Carey Show, Spin City, Desperate Housewives, Grey's Anatomy. Um, even won an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in 1998. But uh, she yeah. She won an Emmy, that's fantastic. Won an Emmy, and yeah, she, uh, her family home was around um, near Carpenter Elementary. Okay. One of the, I think Flint Ridge, that street near there is where she grew up. So, yeah, didn't know that as well. So it's very interesting that somebody, an actress, famous actress from Lake Orion. That's great. And, and this one. Your, uh, yeah, the next one is a pretty famous Lake Orion resident. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he was more famous for his uh, baseball or donuts. People <laughs> loved his donuts. <laughs> yeah, and this one actually, this is what got me into researching more and more history. Uh, someone told me about a donut shop. And actually, my dad told me about this donut shop uh, right next to the post office, uh, which is now um, Snap Taco. But uh, that building was Mickey Lowe's donut shop. And I didn't believe my dad. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> really, a Detroit Tiger is going to make donuts <laughs> in Lake Orion. I'm like, okay. But uh, yeah, after he retired, he actually had a donut shop in uh, Rochester, in downtown Rochester. And then um, uh, after he broke away with his partner, he ended up moving his uh, donut shop in Lake Orion. But uh, yeah, famous Detroit Tigers pitcher from 62 to, 62 to 79. Um, Was he on the world championship team? Yeah, yes. yeah, that's, yep. wow, 68. that's awesome. Yep, yep, and uh, he has many unbroken records like uh, 2,679 strikeouts, 39 shutouts, 459 games started, 329 home runs allowed, and the best one, 10,000 donuts made. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he, he would talk about, um, from the stories I've read, that his daughters and his wife worked at the donut shop as well. And he would be in the back making the donuts, and customers would stop him and be like, oh, we want to we wanna talk to Mickey. And he's like, hey, no, i got to stay back. Someone's got to make the donuts. So <laughs> he's, he's uh, definitely a famous tie to the area. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. We have just a couple minutes left. Um, what do you got? Yeah, there's um, there's one more famous astronaut. He was actually on Fox 2 in the uh -huh. space station when they interviewed him, and he had a Lake Orion Dragons pennant behind wow. him. And uh, they filmed it and showed all the students at school to inspire them. And uh, yeah, Andrew, I believe it's Fustel or Faustel? Fustel? Fustel? Okay, I yeah, butchered that last name. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't know that. He is now on the uh, Lake Orion High School Wall of Fame, among uh, yeah. many others. They just 
kicked that off just a few years ago. And was he the the first class? I think he was I in the first was. class of uh, Hall of Fame inductees. Yeah, and he's a graduate class eighty three. Um, he flew two space shuttle missions, his final trip to Hubble Telescope in 2009, uh, Endeavour's final mission in the International Space Station in 2014. But yeah, I mean, another local person that never would have thought, like, oh, an astronaut from Lake Orion. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, and that list continues to grow. I mean, just a few years ago, I got to meet and interview uh, Nicole Curtis, who uh, is, is pretty yeah. famous on uh, the, the what, what's the channel the uh, HGTV home, uh, HGTV and I remember when I told my sisters I was going to interview her they lost their mind they're like you know Nicole Curtis <laughs> and very pleasant and and she did uh, she purchased a cottage right next to the Veterans Memorial and yeah. uh, renovated that cottage and did a whole series of episodes on just the renovation of that cottage and made Look Orient look fantastic on her show. It was yeah. just absolutely incredible. So yeah, that, that list continues to grow and we keep adding names to that Lake Orion uh, wall oh. of fame. Yeah, yeah, I mean everything from hockey players to some baseball players and baseball coaches. So yeah, yeah, lots of, lots of ties. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and the Terramina brothers, too, as a matter of fact. So <laughs> they want to be on that wall of fame. So, all right. Well, Jimmy, thanks for coming down and spending some time with us. We got to keep this uh, going in the future. Thank so you for having me. So much to talk about. And uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, letting us share a little bit of Lake Orion's history uh, with you. And there's programming on throughout the day that uh, is not only a historical uh, video and film, but also from the 90s when history was happening right here in Lake Orion. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Joe Johnson. Uh, this is Jimmy Johnson, and we're going to throw it back to Ian to uh, wind down our final day of uh, our ONTV food drive benefiting Oxford Orion fish. All right, thanks, Joe. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, we love the history out Lake Orion. We know it's deep and rich, and there's some resources. There's books floating around with more Lake Orion history uh, that we've seen in the library and that sort of thing, but it's great to have it live here in the studio. It brings it uh, a little more tangible. It, it makes it real in a way to, to have all those photos and the discussions. A lot of fun, so thanks, Jimmy, for coming in, and um, okay. Uh, Ian Locke here in the studio. It is the fifth day of our food drive. It is Friday. It is histor history day. And uh, we are at $6,600, uh, hopefully pushing to that $7,000 mark. Um, I do have a correction to make before we get off the air. Joe or uh, Roger Smith said that their newscast, which we showed earlier, the Lake Orion High School newscast, uh, is about 30, 30 plus years old, but the video program is over 50 years old at Lake Orion High School. He said, you must make a correction. I said, after you donate. <laughs> so uh, I hope he got the donate. It hasn't refreshed. But anyway, we'll be over there to pick up the uh, high, high school donations that they collected uh, this week uh, after we get off the air. But again, let's uh, remember we're donating to fish, our food pantry. How can you donate? Head on over to our website at orionontv.org. Click on the Food Drive logo, and it'll take you right to our GoFundMe account, and donate away. And uh, it'll be active until about 5 p.m. this evening. And uh, if you'd like to donate in person, uh, you can also do so up until 5 p.m. Uh, Friday uh, today by bringing your not-perishable items to fill our production van, and or you can drop off your monetary donations as well to the staff. Uh, we're on we're almost ready to fill that van up. It's getting very, very close. We got a lot of food donations today. And uh, you can hop over at 1349 Joslin Road in Lake Orion. We're right at the big blue building at the Orion Center. You can't miss us. Stop on in. If you're in a food emergency, this is critical. If you are in a food emergency or you know somebody in a food emergency, don't hesitate to reach out to FISH. Call 248-628-3933. There are resources available uh, right now they've streamlined their uh, process to uh, get resources to those in need and if you give them a call again 248-628-3933 uh, food is waiting for you today all right you can also visit their website uh, one thing we haven't really mentioned is that uh, fish is run all up uh, 100 percent by volunteers and if you're interested in volunteering at fish you can uh, head on over to their website oxfordorianfish.org and you can find information about how to help them out. If you'd like to donate some items, here's some needed items at FISH this time of year. We talked to Michelle, the president of FISH, uh, this morning. 
And uh, she mentioned that the, the, the shelves are getting sparse. Uh, the items on there are running low on supplies. So uh, canned pineapple, canned mandarin oranges, oranges or uh, canned fruits of any kind, chilies, uh, canned meat stews, and hearty soups. Those are always good this time of year. The things that we like to eat during the uh, cold winter months, uh, please donate those. That's very helpful. Uh, and meal prep items like hamburger helper and um, condiments like ketchup, mustard, and all that good stuff. You can also donate school supplies. So they do uh, packages and all that good stuff. So we are wrapping up here. It is almost 2 o'clock. We are going to say goodbye uh, for today and for the fifth day of the food drive. We can't thank our sponsors enough for supporting us. We can't thank you guys enough at home for watching and supporting on TV and fish all this week. Get online, orientontv.org, and donate, donate, donate to GoFundMe to help fish. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at ONTV, and we're going to say, right, are we saying goodbye? We're going to say goodbye for now. Donate, donate, donate. Tune in 7, or 7 to 9 p.m. for more historical shows uh, into this evening. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.